From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Um, as we were talking about before the break, uh, you know, Fleur de Lis has almost attained already this kind of legendary status. These, you know, A list uh, Brazilian actors are saying, no, I refuse to take any salary. I want to do this service, you know, to this amazing human being to spread the word, uh, to tell her story. Um, you really hit right on the head, Ben, very much a, a Mother Teresa type figure. So this, the film is, is an absolute blockbuster in Brazil. Um, she then uses that clout and notoriety to pursue her, her first love, uh, I guess after God, would have been singing about God, gospel music. She already has this kind of captive audience, this, uh, this fan base that she just wants to grow um, even further, and she does just that um, she, because she's basically this cult of personality at this point. And should you wish wait till the end of this episode but should you wish you can find her music on youtube and you can find her albums on spotify i strongly advise you wait for the rest of the episode before you make that decision uh, but she she wasn't um she wasn't alone in her rise to fame because her husband anderson was no uh no sit at home kind of guy right <laughs> Right. No, no. He was out there uh, pounding the pavement for the Lord as well. Yeah. He's an enormously successful evangelical pastor. Uh, you can read a little bit more about the rise of the evangelical movement in the Atlantic. There's a great article called The Rise of the Brazilian Evangelicals that gives that gives a good sense of the cultural context. But for for our purposes today, just picture Anderson as the one of the most famous religious figures in your part of the world, right? Living religious figures, I mean. Mm -hmm. He's not quite the Pope, of course, uh, but he is he is someone that is very well known. If you are an evangelical in Brazil, you're very much aware of this man. The, he and his wife are a countrywide power couple, right? Yeah. But things are things are getting weird behind the curtain. Things are definitely getting weird. I, by the way, I imagine Anderson as uh, Robert Tilton. I don't know if you remember that guy, but that's who I imagine him as in my head. I, I don't know if any of you know who Robert Tilton is. Um, he he became famous for his compilations or compilations that were made of him, where he, where he flatulates a lot. But he's not really. But it's the farting preacher. If you don't know what that is, then oh, yeah, you'll, the you'll famous wait, farting preacher. But that's, that's, that was your jam alive. back in yeah, the day. Yeah, but Robert yeah. Tilton is a real preacher and he's a real evangelical guy but i'm just imagining this guy as that it's it might not be a good one-to-one -one, but that's <laughs> what i've got in my head um i used to watch him when i was a kid growing up it's really weird stuff is he um, is, is the farting just part of his shtick or is it just having a video catching him farting no he's not actually tooting at all right. there's no there's oh. no tooting whatsoever <laughs> it's just <laughs> something the internet made <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, sorry. That's just how people know him, I guess. Now, oh, okay. Um, okay. So the the problem here is you've got you've got several avenues of money for this family, right? Mm -hmm. You've got anything that's like coming in from that movie that was made. You've got Anderson's stuff going on over here with the uh, evangelical church. Uh, all the money, I guess, the money that comes in tax free uh, for all of that. Then you've also got. Um, uh, You've got her whole career as a singer, right? There's money coming in there. You've got really three major tiers of money. I'm assuming there's other stuff too with real estate or other things that we just don't know about or privy. We're not privy to. Um, but Anderson really starts grabbing the reins for all of that stuff. He starts taking over all of the family finances, and you know, in a lot of relationships, control over finances can become a major issue. And in this family, it became a very big problem. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I mean, financial imbalance 
leads us to the problem of hierarchy and consent, right? Can someone consent to one who controls them? Can they truly do so? That's a, that's a huge problem with human society, and it's compounded when the stakes are this high. I would add one more income stream, which would be uh, non-church-related donations to the family, but those yes, are yes. those are inconsistent, you know? Uh, so... Anderson is not just taking control of the family finances, he's also taking control in a way, he's, he's almost fighting uh, a cold war with Fleur de Lige over, the, um, over like, things as small as the chores in the house, over the, uh, the decision-making process for the family and this small army of children. And we want to plant that seed. That's that's what's happening behind the scenes. But if you were the average Brazilian at this point, it's still hunky dory. You know what I mean? Mother Teresa got married, and these children are growing up. They're doing well. What an inspiration! This fame, this religious base, and this secular fame in music became a wonderful avenue into politics. Mm -hmm. There was a calculation here. And Fleur de Lich first ran for a city council position in 2004. Then she ran for a mayoral position in 2016. And in 2019, very recently, to give you a sense of how the story develops, she was elected to the federal Congress in Rio, she was, uh, I think she got 200,000 votes. Uh, she's commonly referred to in the Brazilian media as the most voted woman for Congress, meaning that she was the most popular candidate there. And there is absolutely no denying that her religious background, her charity work all played a role in this election. I mean, if you had the chance to vote for someone you genuinely believed yeah. was the nicest person post Jesus Christ, how could you not? Well, Brazil is also like infamous for having one of the most corrupt political systems like on the planet. Like, I mean, apparently there are so many people that just like use their vote as a protest vote and just make up like joke candidates because the kind of, I don't know, status quo is so corrupt and everybody knows it. They don't even want to participate in it. Like I think in the 50s, a uh, black rhino um, got more of the popular vote for like a city council position in Sao Paulo, uh, but obviously mm -hmm. couldn't couldn't be elected because, you know, it's a black rhino. Um, but th it makes sense to your point, Ben, that someone like this would be just seen as a beacon of light in such a, you know, uh, rotten and corrupt system. Yeah. Yeah. And just a, we've got a quote here from uh, Camara.leg.br uh, website here. It's um, Camaro dos Deputados. Uh, and it's just a quick quote from her when she was elected. I'm just going to read that to you right now. It says, I will fight for the family, for life, for the woman. I also want to look for resources for the communities, for the construction of sports courts in areas at risk. I will fight for children and adolescents to have an occupation and the traffic does not embrace them. Now that has gone through Google Translate and it is not perfect. Um, <laughs> but you can at least get a sense uh, in English of what she's fighting for. And you can see that, you know, those are values that I think a lot of us would want to support on the face if if you were going to go into a voting booth and cast your vote for somebody that maybe you identify with yeah who's going to disagree what are, what are, who, you're going to vote for the monsters in the race i mean it reminds me of the way that so many sketchy uh private or government institutions and initiatives always have these innocuous benign names mm. like project for a new american century or you know children and puppies playing incorporated it's it's calculated right you would you would feel like a bad person if you didn't cast that vote perhaps uh, it's an appeal to an to emotion and it's quite an effective one she becomes a federal deputy for the state of rio de janeiro and at the time of this recording early september she technically retains this position today Unfortunately, as so often happens in life, 
she met with triumph and disaster, you know, one in each hand. That same year, 2019, her husband, the evangelical leader Anderson, was found murdered. Police began investigating. His body was found as he, you know, he had been clearly returning home on the night of June 16th. Mm -hmm. The family claimed that Anderson had been murdered in a botched robbery attempt. And this is perhaps where our story actually begins. Here's where it gets crazy. So the, the police are very well aware of who this woman is, right? They, they think the same. Uh, the, the very, they have the same kind of public image burned in their mind as everybody else. But they have to do their job. Mm -hmm. So they begin investigating. And that's when they discover some bizarre facts. We talked about that age difference earlier. There's a reason that Fleur Delish is uh, 16 years older than her husband. Yeah. You see, <laughs> yeah, you see, before he was her spouse, he was her adopted son. And oh, my, I feel like we need a dun 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 sound cue there. I and mean, that's like yeah. the, the twist in the movie. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe that's in the sequel for that yeah. 2009 film. Before the two married, Anderson also dated one of uh, one of Flor Dillis's other children, biological child named uh, Simone. When Simone and Anderson broke up, Anderson and Flor Delis began dating uh, then. So police also found that before adopting that total of 51 children, Flor Delis had a uh, smaller family of about seven children. Um, the older kids, uh, the biological kids and the first five adopted kids were considered the A kids. Ooh. Let that A-team. sink in for a second. Yeah. And then if you got an A team, uh, you got you got to have a B team. And that, that's what the other kids were considered, the B kids. The A kids could go to certain, they had like free run of the house, basically. Uh, they had all the privileges. The other kids were uh, confined to certain parts of the house. Uh, they also received better food. Um, the younger children were uh, given nothing but scraps in the B, the B kids. Old pasta, you mm -hmm. know, stale bread, stuff like mm -hmm. that, that you would probably typically feed to like the dog or, or toss. Yeah. And yeah. this is important. People were not aware of this hierarchy outside of the family for a long time. Uh, this is what, this is what witnesses are talking about when they say that the public image did not match the practice in private. Reportedly, uh, the parents kept so many children as kind of a marketing ploy and a source of income. So it was perhaps not as altruistic as it appeared to be in the media. Uh, one deputy involved with the homicide case said that the money from the ministry was directly used to maintain the luxuries to which uh, this individual had become accustomed. It's it, the next part is really messed up and we're going to save it until we get back from this next break. And we'll tell you why this very strange situation as we're, we're beginning to see it come to shape. We, it gets weirder and there may have been, as we said at the top, some kind of cult going on here. 